Hi there. Welcome to Draw With Me. I am Danny Gregory, and uh, I'm looking forward to drawing with you today. First of all, how amazing were all those pieces of art about Amon, Amos Lem, Lemon Burkhart? Uh, Amos is an, uh, an artist, or was an artist, who we talked about last week. And I have to say, it was just... It was very, very touching, the whole experience to me. It was, it was inspiring, it was, it was moving, and seeing all of the work that you made in response to this idea was incredible. I mean, I think we got more art about this than I think we've ever had on anything before, so that's really gratifying. And um, I hope you enjoyed the experience. It was just interesting to see all the different interpretations and responses, because this is different. This wasn't just like, here's a piece of art, copy it, or here's a photo, let's draw from it. It was really, let's be inspired by this entire story of a young artist whose life was cut short and talking about what were the issues around that. And I also was really inspired by the fact that so many of you shared your work on social media is to share not only the work but also this message of um, you know living and making art and how important both are and to encourage people to find out more about Amos's story and to support the foundation and so forth so it was really great and I think a lot of you were inspired and that was really really nice so for those of you who are new like Super Jill you came in kind of Last week was not typical of Draw With Me, but maybe in some ways it was because it was typical of the spirit of Draw With Me, which I hope re remains about the importance of art in our lives and the notion that, um, you know, that we all have the potential to make art, a uh, potential that's inside of us, and that we do a lot of things to, to sabotage or to uh, sort of stifle, and that ultimately release our creative instincts we're happier we're more inspired um our lives are richer so uh you know and i think that that's something that certainly i talk about an awful lot that's i've been thinking about that recently about what is it that i'm doing like what am i exactly and um what is my purpose in doing all the things that i do because I think, you know, being an artist isn't really my main sort of identity. Um, being a writer probably is more than anything. But also, um, what is my message? What am I writing about? What am I making art about? And I think I'm making art about making art, I think, in the end. I'm making art about the importance of art in our everyday lives. And uh, the idea that that art doesn't have to be a career necessarily. It doesn't have to be something that you, uh, you know, quit your job to do. It doesn't need to be something that you necessarily even need any extensive training or any training at all or any education at all. You need to just show up and do it. And uh, that's what we're doing here today. What we do here every week is we just draw together and make stuff. So, um, Sorry, I've got a piece of breakfast caught in my tooth, sorry. Um, so today is going to be a pretty simple thing that we're going to do. We're going to draw a fish. Have you ever drawn a fish before? We've drawn dogs, we've drawn cats, so it's only natural that we would come around to drawing a fish. Am I going to talk about Marty fish? Uh, no. I'm going to talk about... I'm going to talk about the fishes that swim in the sea. Um, you know, I think fishes are so varied. In fact, I wanted to show show this book to you. Um, it's a really great book that I got a while ago. Did I, when did I buy this? Why did I get this? Yes, I bought this for 
or JJ a long time ago, but it's a book called Why Fish Don't Exist, written by Lulu Miller, who is, um, she was on NPR. She's really a fantastic uh, journalist, and this book is just fascinating. I, I don't want to talk too much about it, but I will say it is a story of uh, really the first person who really kind of started to categorize sea life and it's 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 about categorization how science works how we um how scientists have to break things down into categories and phylums and species and all those different categories but the title why fish don't exist relates to the fact that there isn't really a thing called fish that there's really no connection between all of the marine animals between crabs and bass and tunas and sharks and those weird things with the tendrils that live on the bottom of the sea, that they're actually not really connected and that fish is a sort of all-encompassing term that humans use, but, but fish themselves are not really um, a class. Anyway, I'm doing a terrible job. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, um... Yes, I gave J. I, I get, yes, I gave it to JJ, and then I I think I she started reading it, and then I took it away, and I started reading because I really liked it. You know, it's like when you buy a book for someone, and then you're like, I really actually bought this book for me. Well, I did. Um. So, yes, um, that's what we're going to work on today is fish. So let's just get to it, and I'll think of something to say <laughs> as we start it. Um. Let's go. All right, so here's, here's fish. Here's a fish. Let me just get this organized. Let me get rid of this for, get rid of my fish. So this is a, I think it's a rainbow trout, which is a nice looking fish. But um, I'm going to be working in this Hanamula gray book. So this is <clears throat> paper that is gray. Remember a while ago we worked in this book when we did the portrait of Oscar Wilde? Um, that was about Dorian Gray, sort of, vaguely. But this is really nothing to do with that. This is about fish. So are there gray fishes? I don't know. But I like the idea of working in a gray book today because I was just thinking about, you know, um, wanting to draw something a little detailed, a little high contrast. I also really quite like the way that <clears throat> it's a cutthroat trout. Is it really? So that's different from a rainbow trout. I just, I really don't know much about fish. Um, I don't even eat that many of them. Ever since there was the whole scandal with Subway having fake tunas, tuna fish, I've been very disturbed by the idea of fish. Because they never really explained what was going on there with with uh, Subway. All right, so let me, let's put the fish back up. Um, and in fact... Let's turn him this way, because I'm thinking that, that this is what I want to do. I want to start by just drawing. Um, well, actually, no. Let's let's look at the whole thing. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm kind of meandering around a bit because I'm trying to get my bearings. But let's look at the overall fish, and let's kind of think about where what we want to do with it on the page, okay? Let's be organized about this. And what, what do we want to do with this with this fish. So I was kind of imagining like this fish kind of filling the page like this. But now that I'm looking at the size of this book, and I'm looking at this spread, maybe I go across the spread. But then I also had this idea of just a giant fish head. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's a fish tail coming down one side and a fish head going up the other side. Hmm. Okay. All right, so let's let's look at it that way. I think that's what I want to do. So you can do whatever you want. And in fact, um, if you're interested in this reference, this is a new thing that I'm doing. Let me just stop a second and tell you this. New thing that I'm doing is um, I'm using the community function in YouTube. So if you go to our YouTube channel, you'll notice a thing that says community, and that's kind of a blog. And so what I'm doing is a couple of days before Draw With Me, I'm trying to post something about it, and often I'm putting the reference that I'm going to use up there. 
In fact, I did that this week. So if you want to get this actual picture, you can just go right there and you can download it yourself. Okay, if you want to have that actual picture. And I think I also put a, did I put the picture there? Yeah, I also put a link to where I got the reference from. So that should make it easier for you if you want to, if you're tired of me moving things around. Because I'm going to move him, I'm going to move this guy around based on what I want to do with him. You know, um, I want to, I want to think about that. So, all right. So um, another option is to draw three pictures of him just to have like a big picture of him going across, have a face coming down here, and have a tail at the other end. Do we have time for that? Yeah, why not? Okay, so maybe I'll start, maybe I'll do that. And or maybe I'll draw a small one here. Boy, I'm just full of ideas today. <laughs> yes, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to work on one page. I'm not going to work on a spread. You do you, I'm going to do me. This is what I'm doing. Me and Me and my... What is it again? A, what kind of trout was this again? Cutthroat trout. Cutthroat. All right, good. So I'm going to draw a little picture of him here first across the bottom of the page. Let's move him up there. And so I want to think about what are his proportions. So I'm going to begin by measuring him. So let's measure him here. And so we can say, all right, Let's measure his height, his height from the top of his tail to the bottom there. So it's kind of like from the top of my pen to this top of this green piece of tape. So then I can take this green piece of tape and I can measure. So I can go, okay, that's from the, from the front of his nose to the sort of middle, just right behind his gill is one. The bottom of his fin is two. Back of the fin is three, and then the end of him is just a little under four. Okay, so I know that he is one tall and four across. So I'm going to hopefully bear that in mind. So I'm going to make a little mark on either side to remember that by, and I'm going to say, uh, just going to draw him fairly quickly. Oh, wait, I needed to draw. Boy, I've already screwed this up. Okay, so obviously he's that long. Yes, that's how long the drawing is going to be. I didn't really need to make those marks to figure that out. But I do need to go one, two, three, and four. Okay, so when I put it down in my book, it is about four cap lengths, which is an officially registered, officially recognized measurement unit. The cap length. And I sort of remember where my um, measurements were on the picture. So I can, oh, and then I need to do a cap length that recognizes the height of him. Right, because that's what I was doing. So that would be here and here. So that's kind of where the top of his fin is going to go. Let's see if this actually works. Oh, I did, I, you know what I also want to know? Where does that fin begin? begin. So it's tape is one. So it's about where the second marker was. Am I being clear on what I'm doing? Probably not. doesn't really matter. You'll figure it out. Um, Hey, that's actually not bad. You know, through the magic of TV, let's see. Is it pretty good? Not bad. Not great, but not bad. This fin is in the... The fins are in the bottom or they're in the wrong place, but... All right. But I'm not going to cheat. I'm just going to pretend... Pretend that it's basically right. It's 
not really, but let's pretend that it's basically right. I mean, I got the main thing is I just put the fins to. They're a bit, they're a bit, they're a bit forward, but it's okay. Okay, so um, how detailed do I want to get with this little mini drawing? Because this mini drawing is meant to be sort of a guide, I guess, to what the overall fish looks like. But the, I guess the vision I had in my head when I was thinking about this. In the first place was like, like I was imagining some like really detailed, scaly, you know, kind of sea monstery looking fish. This guy is a little bit slimy and he's not really as kind of corrugated and barnacled as I would have liked. So, you know. He's not, he's not the ideal specimen, but when I tried looking for the best reference, I just I didn't find any. I found, I found actually the things that I liked the look of the most were actually other people's drawings and paintings. But most, there weren't really like really good photos of fish that weren't like either swimming or being held in some fisherman's hand. So I didn't think either of those were great reference for today. I mean, I might, might, I might personally have worked with them, but when it came to kind of sharing them with you and so forth, it just felt like let's just go with something that's kind of something you would see in a in a, probably like a biology textbook, rather than it being a really great piece of visual reference for an artiste, a fish artist, an ichthyo artist. Is that the correct term? What is the current term for? Fish artists. I know they have a huge and very powerful union that is uh, has all kinds of rules to it. They hold sway over just, I think, too much of the world. The power of the Ichthyo Artistic Union, IAU. I'm tired of their meddling. I mean, they're probably monitoring this video right now and they're going to come down with some kind of a summons you need not only do you need a fishing license but apparently now you need a fishing drawing license thanks to the power of the union as was it pete seeger or Audrey guthrie sorry i'm thinking about unions these days because my son is in a union and uh for the first time in its history they are talking about going on strike In Hollywood, Hollywood strike. Art directors, scenics, people who build sets, design productions, thinking about going on strike. So, let's see if they do. You'd think that they would have gone through enough this year. So I'm real like there's a lot of cool spots to this thing. But I'm also entranced a little bit by the this orange stripe down him. And I'm interested to see how to work with that on this tone paper. I'm also going to set myself some kind of a time limit because I don't want to spend the entire time doing this. I, I, my whole idea was that this was going to be just a quick, loose sketch in the middle of the page, and then it was going to be flanked by the head and the tail. But now I'm really kind of getting into it, so I'll have to see what happens. Should I be using a bigger pen? No, this is an 08. It's a Windsor Newton fine liner. And uh, the one thing I take issue with with these pens is that they're they're very they come in a whole range of things and range of colors but this is the only thing that distinguishes the 03 from the 08 so I have to kind of mark them so that when I go and grab one 
because it's a nice design, but they all kind of, they're not clearly dis demarcated enough for me, so I have to kind of customize them, but I don't think that they would object to my doing that. All right, so let's, in I'm not going to, uh, I've started. Okay, let's bring in uh, the, Bring in the cart of colored pencils now. Because I'm also noticing that there's a very nice blue in here. So I just want to indicate that this is blue. I'm not really doing an elaborate coloring job yet or ever. But I'm just indicating that this area is blue. And I also like the way that it looks on this paper as opposed to like white, right? That's white. So you can see the difference, the white and gray. Quite nice. Not much of a fisherman myself. Um, I've caught, I think I can, I can enumerate the fish that I've caught. I think there are maybe two. Um, I had uh, a sort of distant relative invited me to his trout club in Cleveland once. And what is a trout club? It's not a club for trout to hang out in, believe me. It's not that, but it is a place where people catch trout. Now you would say, how, how exactly would you have a club that where people catch trout? Right? That's what I was mystified by. I was like, well, what do you mean you catch trout there? Well, it turned out that it was kind of like a golf course with trout streams, artificial trout streams built into it. So there were these long troughs filled with water and uh, you could just sit there and just fish. They were stocked with trouts and you could fish just sitting there just right outside the building. It was kind of weird. And um, yeah, so you could have like a gin and tonic from the clubhouse in one hand, fishing rod in the other, and you could pull up a trout. And when you did, if you wanted to, they would take it into the clubhouse and cook it for you. So, I was like, this is kind of weird, but I'm talking about shooting fish in a barrel, right? But that's what, it, that's what the experience was like. And um, I did catch, I mean, it was, it, was, it was way harder, I think, to not catch a trout than to catch one. Because basically, you'd put your rod into your, you don't put your rod into the water. You'd put your lure into the water. Is that what it's called? And uh, seconds later, there was a fish flopping around. I was kind of horrified by it. I'd literally never caught a fish before. Barely ever seen a living fish outside of an aquarium. And there it was thrashing around on the lawn. And they whisked it away, but we didn't eat it. What happened was, about a month later, a package arrives from Cleveland, and in it is this trout that I caught mounted on a piece of wood. I think I still have it somewhere. With a brass plaque on it. With my name and the date in which I managed to land this monster. Yeah, that was weird. So, that was my first fishing experience. David says, that's not fishing. I know, I know. It's kind of like the fishing equivalent of, like, tracing. You threw it away? My wife threw it away. Yeah. She, yes, well, anyway, it's gone. So, all right, so... That is a not, okay, I think that's a pretty good version of it. So now I want to get into, let's see if we can get into some details. Are you cool with this? 
I'm moving on, folks. Moving on to this guy. Getting rid of this guy. Okay. I think my idea is still going to work. I think it's still going to work. I think it's going to look great. So here's what I'm thinking. Trap face here. And I'm just going to kind of do it. I'm not going to do the measurement thing anymore. I kind of know now what his general topography is all about. And, uh, but I am interested in looking at him much more closely now. Looking at this negative space here, the negative space of his mouth. And then arcing back. I did a piece once for the New York Times called, what was it called? Well, it was about fishing in Manhattan. And um, I had a friend who was suddenly got really into fishing and we were working together on a project and he said to me one day, hey, do you want to come fishing with me? And I was like, um, I guess, um, when? And he said, yeah, we'll go at lunchtime. So <laughs> we went into Central Park. That's where he fished. And he had like all this fishing gear, and he had like a hat covered with lures, and he had a vest, all this stuff. And... Um, We went to one of the bodies of water that are in Central Park. There's a number of them that have fish in them. And I watched him fish. I mean, I I didn't have any gear, and but I was sort of in, interested in the fact that this even went on. And it turned out it was it not only went on, but it was quite a thing. There were like a number of these guys who were all fishing there in Central Park. And... You know, they caught a couple things. They, it's catch and release, so they, you know, they didn't have to like go back in a taxi with a fish that they had just killed, but or that kind of stuff. But they did, uh, they did catch fish and they let them go. And he, he said there was one fish that had been caught like hundreds of times. <laughs> it was like a legendary fish that people just kept catching and releasing and catching and releasing. Now. I guess the fish, what did the fish get out of that exactly? Besides getting steel hook in its mouth. It, uh, was it the, was it, was it a competition between the two? Not really. Maybe he got a little bit of, of a worm or whatever it was each time. Maybe he just wasn't very smart. But he, uh, apparently he was, he, I mean, when I say years, I mean, it was it was sort of, he was legendary over, like, is it possible decades? Do fish live that long? But yeah, so he had been in living in this thing and in Central Park, and they had been catching and releasing him for years. And so I just started thinking about that. And then, um, so I was doing some project for the New York Times at the time, and I, and I said, what do you think about this idea of all these people fishing in Manhattan. And my editor was like, yeah, sure, why don't you do something about that? So I did this piece where I went all around the perimeter of Manhattan. And first of all, it occurred to me that Manhattan is kind of like fish-shaped. It's long and thin. It doesn't have gills or fins, but it's long and thin, basically. And it's like if this is downtown, you know, and this is where, like, the Twin Towers are and so forth, well... They're not there anymore, but the World Trade Center. And uh, this is where Central Park is, and Harlem's up here. Yeah, so it was sort of fish-shaped. So I drew a map of Manhattan that was kind of fish-shaped, and then I went around, and I spent a couple weeks, really, going around the all of these different places in Manhattan where people fished and talking to them about it. Because, you know, Manhattan is, of course, an island surrounded by two rivers. And... Um, I learned quite a lot about it because at first you think, oh, God, what could be grosser than pulling 
fish out of the Hudson. But then I discovered that, well, first of all, people have been fishing in the Hudson for probably thousands of years, but the water in the Hudson is now cleaner than it's been in something like 300 years. And there are literally hundreds of species of fish. Um, there have been occasionally even whales. JJ will get excited about that because periodically she would say we've got there are whales that sometimes come into the Hudson we've got to go and find them and uh, I want to see a whale breaching um, we never did but we we went on several excursions just to try and figure that out and we never saw any but anyway so I've met um, all kinds of people and a lot of them were actually fishing for their families like they it was a regular thing for them to fish and eat, and eat the fish. Um, and I went in, off in the East River, particularly off uh, Alphabet City and Harlem. There were a lot of fishermen there. There were fishermen down all around the, the uh, Battery, that area. There used to be the Fulton Fish Market, which kind of doesn't exist anymore, but that was down there. And then there's also, of course like kind of guys with money, like uh, Wall Street guys who go fishing in their own boats. They have fishing boats and um, they go out into the bay and they catch fish. So, it was, it was, I mean, I'd lived in Manhattan for so long, it just never occurred to me that that was even a thing. And just sure enough, it was. It just felt so, I don't know, Midwestern somehow, I guess. Yeah, whatever. It just didn't feel like, like big city New Yorkers, let's go fishing. But there's a lot of it going on. A lot of these folks are out there fishing. Sharks, yes. Sharks. I mean, Jaws takes place in Long Island. Brooklyn is part of Long Island. Yeah, it's always interesting to me in a big city, you know, when you think of it a certain way and then you find out like, oh, people have vegetable gardens and people are raising chickens and all that stuff. I'm, I'm, I think that's really cool. Incredibly expensive vegetable gardens in Manhattan. But, okay, so there's there's that fish. Now let's see if I can get his tail up here. Yeah, that tail is beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to now work on the tail, and the tail's going to come down here. So I'm going to try and I'm going to try and um, line it up with. The fish head. Fish head, fish head. Isn't there a song like that? Tiny little fish head. Fish head, fish heads. Eat them up young. That was a song, wasn't it? This fish is roly poly fish heads, right? What is that from, that song? There's a lot to see in this fish tail, isn't there? There's a lot of, um, Reflections and different colors. First, I looked at him. I was like, "Yeah, it's kind of a you know basic beige fish." But the more you look at him, the more you see how beautiful it is. And how specific, also. Again, you think of fish. Each fish as being kind of generic. You know, each each 
particular spe- uh, specimen. But then when you look at all these um, little dots on him, you know that might be the equivalent of like a um, like a barcode or a QR code. You know, for other fish, they might go, "Oh yeah, that's Jerry." Hey Jerry, how you doing? How did you know that was Jerry? Well, it says right on the side of him. There's dots. That's what that is. It's fish ID tags. Tells you all about where he came from and, you know, what he likes to eat. How many times he's been caught by fishermen in Central Park. His horoscope, his favorite books. I once had a big aquarium. It was given to me as a, a present. You know when you get one of those presents from people that are just like, God, this is a really nice present, but man, thanks for giving me an enormous amount of hard work that I basically, due to guilt, I'm going to have to carry on for many years in the future. My sister gave me this giant, was it 50 gallons? I don't know. It was huge aquarium that we had to put in the middle of our living room. You know, and, and as soon as you have an aquarium in your living room, I don't know, it's something I'm not that happy about. Has, you know, because aquariums have a certain aesthetic, you know, to make them look chipper. So you have to get like bright plastic. You have to have get like one of those treasure chests that opens up and a skeleton hand comes out, and you have to, you know, you get all the fishes, and they then they start dying and. And then you have to um, you have to kind of suck out. That was the thing. That was the worst. You have to suck that tube to drain some of the water out each week and to clean out the stuff. Oh God, it was vile. Kind of forgotten about that. But anyway, so we had this giant aquarium, and um, eventually I said, you know what? I can't. I have to just wait until all the fish die, and then I can get finally get rid of it. But there was one fish that would not die. It was called an iridescent shark. That's what they called it. It wasn't really a shark. It was a fish. It was a. It was a. A catfish. It was a catfish with a, with a badass name. Yeah. So this catfish got bigger and bigger and ate all the other fishes until eventually it was the only fish left. And it got so big that I would look at it and I would think, you know what, You're, you might make a little meal. Like you'd make a pretty good side dish at the very least or an appetizer. You know, you're pretty big. You're getting bigger. And I thought, yeah, obviously I'm not going to pull him out of the aquarium. But he lived for months after the other fishes were all dead. And um, he would... Th- th- go back and forth, back and forth in this aquarium, back and forth endlessly. And um, it was kind of a horrifying sea monster by the time he died because he got so big that he was, he would like fill a frying pan. He was the size of a trout by the time we were done. And then one day he died and I thought, oh God, thank God he died get rid of this thing. It was not easy to get rid of either. Oh, I want to go back and color some of that head of this guy. Sorry, I'm going to drag him back down. Oh, no, that's not going to do it. Um, I want to just color his head. Anyway, so those are my fish tales. Not very inspiring. I'm sure you have way better ones. People have really good fish stories. Mine are just sort of pathetic. But these are, they are nice to draw, I gotta say. Really nice to draw. How 
Got a bit of white pencil. That's the that's the most exciting thing to do in a uh, yeah in a gray book. White pencil, yeah. That's where it's at, man. Right. Not too bad. Wasn't sure how this is going to come out. Haven't really drawn a fish in a long time. But uh, did I finish my story about the Manha about the New York Times f fishing thing? Anyway, so I drew this map and I drew lots of little stories all over it about different people catching fish in different ways and and uh, you know yeah it ran as a full page. It, I think it was a full page in the New York Times, yeah. Those are the days, newspapers. It wasn't that long ago, actually, but... Um, Greta, welcome back. I hope you won, because uh, you've missed an extremely exciting episode of Draw With Me. Jen, it's funny that you talk about that because I'm going to share that with the folks in a minute. Muriel Foster's Fishing Diary, because I love it too. And uh, there you have it. Why did I decide to draw a fish today? Um, I have no idea. It just came to me, like a fish in the night. <laughs> yes, like a fish at dawn. I'm quite happy with that. So now I just want to write a little something. A little something, something. Do I? I don't know if I know enough about this fish to say anything about it. I guess I could do some research into, what is it called? Cutthroat trout. But I kind of like the way this is looking just by itself. This whole page. I kind of like the look, the look of that page. So there you have it. Okay, I think I'm, I'm done with this particular incident. But that was fun. Um, good. You know what? I wanted to, seeing as we're talking about Muriel Foster, I wanted to share that with you. Uh, a little bit of Muriel Foster. So Muriel Foster was... Uh, she wasn't a professional artist, I don't think, but she lived in uh, Scotland, and she had a, I don't know, she loved to go fishing. And over the course of, I don't know, 30 years maybe, whenever she would go fishing, she had a fish log. One of the accoutrements, apparently, of fishing is to have a place to record your your victories. So she would write down, so, you know, you write down, like, what kind of fish you caught, how big it was, what was the date, you know, what were the conditions, and you just have this log. So she used this log book to draw in. And um, she would sit there while she was waiting for the fish to show up, and she would just draw the countryside or other animals that she saw or plants or the fish that she caught. And I love that idea of, of having a, you know, a visual log. That was the thing that my friend who would catch fish in Central Park would do. He had a special Instagram account just for the fish that he caught. So he would catch a fish, take its picture, put it on Instagram, put the fish back in the pond. And, uh, you know, that was his thing. Instagram fishing. So she did sort of the 20th century equivalent of that, which is drawing in a book. And uh, yes, so Terry, if you want that picture, if you want that picture, go and, as I said before, go look at the community section of YouTube. If you go to the, I'll put it up here for a second while I talk about this. But let me just reiterate what I said before, because, um, you know, it, it bears repeating, apparently. 
full full guy. There he is. There he is. There he is. Okay. So there he is. Okay. So um, just take a screen grab of that. But also, I would say go to the community section, which is if you go to YouTube and you go to the Sketchbook School channel, you'll see it says community there. And when you do, it's our blog. And I'm posting the reference there. And you can just download it. All right. Cool. Back to me. I like that transition from fish head to my head. Anyway. Um, so this book was, you know, she spent 30 or 40 years filling it in, filling it up. And uh, then ultimately, the uh, I think it was Penguin did a reproduction of a beautiful reproduction of the entire book. It's just like a perfect replica of the book that comes in a box. And I'm going to share it with you now. Uh, so yeah, so every week on Draw With Me, we I do a sketchbook tour where I find some random sketchbook. Not random. A lot of times they're made by friends of mine or they are sketchbooks of mine. And we spend a couple minutes just looking through it for inspiring ourselves. And it's sponsored by Windsor Newton, who also is... Windsor Newton and Hanamula are our sponsors for this show. They've given us the, the stuff to make fish with. So let's have a look at it. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. So this is it. Comes in this box. This is the book. It's really nice. Muriel Foster's Fishing Diary, published by Penguin. 
imagine you can buy it um, online somewhere. It's long out of print, I imagine. And also somebody asked, else asked about this, Why Fish Don't Exist, A Story of Lost Love and the Hidden Order of Life by Lulu Miller. Recommended. Yeah, that's uh, beautiful to see. That Muriel Foster book. I mean, I've, I've shared it probably too many times before because I can't get enough of that book. I just love, I love all the sort of tabulations too and the, you know, how many pounds of fish she caught in a given year. And, and I only showed you one side of the book. There's also the whole other side, which I couldn't film. So there's just a lot to see. There's a lot of inspiration in a book like that. David Pyle, up your alley, I would think, right? Maybe it's time to start keeping a book like that. Um, so yeah, so that's that is what we're gonna what we're doing this week, drawing fishes. I hope uh, I get to see your fish, and um, and I hope you I hope you will try these tone papers. Uh, we did the cappuccino book, and we gave away a copy of that, and uh, I gave it to Mitzi. Mitzi Benick is out there, and uh, I hope that you've enjoyed it. I also wanted to give it away, give away this. I'm going to give this one away, too. This great book by Hanamula with my drawing of the fish in it. Given this, I'm releasing, I'm catching and releasing this fish. So if you would like it, write to info at sketchbookschool.com. In the subject line, write something about how you want the sketchbook. And if maybe make a convincing case. I mean, I'll randomly select it probably from all the people who ask for it, if, if there are many of them. But I have to say, insider tip, the people who make the most artful plea, the most compelling plea, are often the ones who get it. As did Mitzi last week, two weeks ago. But, uh, but Mitzi, you are not eligible to get this one. But the cappuccino is on its way to you. So, um, all right, cool. This has been Draw With Me. I hope you did draw with me. And if you did, I hope I get to see what you made. Um, so let's, let's get together next time, okay? And in the meantime, farewell. We'd love to see the art that you made this week, so please share it with us. Post it on social media, on Facebook, on Instagram, or in our own schoolyard, and tag it. SBS Draw With Me. Thanks very much to our sponsors, Hanamula and Windsor Newton. And if you'd like to continue to inspire your creativity, here are three suggestions. One, subscribe to this channel, and then you'll know the next time that I make a video. And two, get my newsletter. I write an essay every Friday, and people seem to like getting it, maybe because it's free. And three, watch another video. And people seem to like getting it, maybe because it's free. And three, watch another video.